All right, guys. In our last video, we took a three took a look at three tools. We took a look at the move tool, the zoom tool, and also the free transform tool. What we want to do today, we want to look at how to actually remove the background the background from the image to be left with just the object that we um, want to kind of focus in on. And to do that, we're going to look at three different tools. One is called the magic wand. And that's this one that actually looks like a magic wand. There's another one, if we click and hold down on it, that's called the quick selection tool. Now it kind of looks like a paintbrush and then there's like these dotted lines going around it. So that's the quick selection tool. Not to be confused with the actual paintbrush. Okay? And then the other one is this lasso tool or one that's called the magnetic lasso tool. You probably uh, find that you use the magnetic lasso more often than any others. So the magnetic lasso we get to by clicking and holding down on the tool, and we can see that. Now, just a quick word: um, anything that has kind of this little triangle in the corner means that there's more tools behind it. So they have lots of tools in Photoshop, but they only want to display a handful, and so they kind of put more behind the tool um, if there's more tools there then as well okay all right so what we want to first start off we're gonna to go to the quick selection tool and this is a pretty neat tool um, what it can do um, as we come over here though we see that it right now uh, in our kind of in our uh, cursor there that it's very small and so up at the top I see that I've got this little dot there that says four that's the size of my brush I want to use a size that's a little bit bigger Yours may have defaulted to 13 or so, and that's fine if you uh, want to choose that. Now, as I see my cursor, it's much bigger. The other thing I want to notice is that I've got this plus sign here. That means we're going to be adding to our selection. Over here, you can subtract from the selection as well, and there's occasions while we'll do that when we would do that as well. But each of these tools really serves a different purpose and so sometimes Photoshop has lots of tools that you can use but you've got to decide which is the best tool to use for that occasion. Now in this picture the background is a very common and it's a very uh, all the same color and so in that case I would probably choose to use the quick selection tool. So with the quick selection tool, what I can do is kind of just click and hold it down and go around all of this blue. Now when I do that, it selects all of this blue area and it puts a dotted line around all of this blue and then it goes around the bird as well. So right now what I've selected is this blue. Now I could get really kind of in uh, fine-grained with this and I could really zoom in and I could go into the wings probably not really necessary for our purposes um, here but if I wanted to I could definitely come in and I could click on the minus sign because now it's where it comes in on the wing um, I could kind of like make it go a little bit further out so it's not selecting the wing probably use a little bit smaller brush in order to do that if I got too much and I, now I like unselected part of the blue, I can click back on the plus sign and I can go in and kind of try to get a little bit better there. So um, like I said, though, not really that important at this point to be that um, exact. We really just want to learn how to do it at this point. Okay, now, like I said, I've right now, because I clicked on all the blue, I see that the blue is going, this dotted line is going around the outside. I know what I have selected right now is actually all this blue. Well, I want to have this bird show up. And so um, if I was to just to remove the background or try to remove the background at this point, what I would actually do is only be removing um, the bird and be left with the blue. So let me show you what would happen. So before we do anything, if I do a two finger click, I have this option here of layer via copy. Now what that means is that it's going to make a new layer of anything that I have selected and it's going to copy that area. So I click on that layer via copy. Initially it looks like nothing happened 
But I come over here to my layers panel over here on the side, and I now see that I've got two layers over here on the side. Layer 0, which is my first layer, looks the same, but layer 1, I can tell, looks a little bit different. So I'm going to hide this bottom layer by clicking on the eye, and what I see then is that my bird disappears because I know that, that um, what I had selected was the blue. So it made a new copy of just what I had selected, which was all of that. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back, and I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo it. And this time what I want to do, I'm going to come up and hit Select. I want to choose the inverse. The inverse means the opposite. And by selecting the inverse, you'll see that it takes this out of line off from around the outline. And now it's just around my bird. And so because of that, I know that just the bird is selected. So now what I want to, want to do is do a two-finger click again, hit Layer via Copy, and this time when I come over here, I see that I now have two very different layers. I hide the, this bottom layer by clicking on the eye, and I get just the bird. And that's really what I want. I wanted just the bird. Now, just a quick note, anytime you see kind of this checkerboard pattern, that is not actually going to show up. What that means is that this is a transparent layer, but they want to make sure that you know that it's transparent and not just a white background or something, and so they put it in a, this checkerboard pattern to represent that it's a transparent layer. So as of right now, this the only thing that would show up is just this bird if I was to um, put this picture somewhere else. Okay. So in this case, uh, for the task that we wanted to do, the quick selection tool worked very well. Now, let's take a look at a different picture, and I'm going to open up the picture of the van that was on our website. It kind of opens up pretty small initially, and so I'm going to just kind of zoom into it by just kind of doing a two-finger click on it. And if I was to try to do the quick selection tool, you know, and at least initially, it does a pretty good job uh, going around the top, but as I get down to the bottom, you'll see that it misses a lot of area, and especially it just cuts off the tires completely. Because the way that this tool works is it's looking for differences between colors. And so it can kind of tell the difference between the blue and uh, the background here, this um, the, all this greenery. But down at the bottom, the the street and the tires are basically the same color and so it doesn't know the difference and as I clicked on the street it saw that the tires look basically the same and so it cut those off as well. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect this by hitting command D and I'm going to choose a different tool for this one. I'm going to choose the magnetic lasso. So that's right above this one here. And the magnetic lasso, the way this works is I kind of click once and it kind of says, all right, that's the spot that you want to focus on. And it's going to go around and it's going to find the difference in color. Now, I've got a little problem here because of this windshield. It's basically the same color as the background. So as we go, it's going to kind of jump. And it jumps over to the post there. Well, I wanted to pick that windshield up. So I can hit delete to get rid of that spot. And then I can go ahead and just click and it will kind of force this, the point to go in place there. Then as I come up again to the top, I can just kind of drag my finger around the top of it and I can draw around it and it's going to automatically connect to the edge. I don't even have to necessarily be all that close and it will still continue to connect onto the edge of it. But I want to try to go around. Sometimes when you get to a corner, <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes when you get to a corner, you know, it's helpful to kind of click so you can kind of force it in place and it knows that you're looking for a different color or a change in color. And so we're going to go around and we are going to select um, around our tires this time. And again, I'm going to have to kind of click to kind of force it in place. And so I might get a little um, bit of jaggedness on my tires. I'm going to hit delete because it started to kind of jump there a little bit. So I want to kind of straighten that out. So I can click to go around. 
And what I'm looking to do is basically just completing the path. And I want to go back to where we started from. Once I make it back to where I started from, you'll see that <coughs> once I make it back to where I started from, you'll see that there's this new little dot that shows up right there next to my magnetic lasso. That lets me know that I've made it back to where you started from and if I click on that spot it's going to turn it into this dotted line. Once I've got the dotted line going around it I can again do a two finger click on it and hit layer via copy. I can click on the eye next to the bottom layer here that will hide that one and will just make this one show up. And there we go. It's a pretty good job of cutting out the van from a pretty difficult background. Now what we want to do then is we want to go ahead and post it onto our Padlet. So there's uh, a way that we want to go about doing that. We're going to come up and we're going to hit File, we're going to hit Save As, and when we save it, when we save it we've got two options. One, it defaults to Photoshop. Now if we're still working on a project you're going to want to save it as a Photoshop file because that will save all our layers, it will save any work that we've done, and it will allow us to continue to work on the actual Photoshop file and we can continue editing it. But once we have finished it, what we'll want to do is save it a, maybe a second time even as a JPEG. What this will do is it'll save it as a picture and it will allow us to um, post it onto the palette. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to come down um, and I'm going to go back to our class page and on here then what you'll see is we've got a link and this is the way that we're going to kind of see and check that you were able to actually do the work. So here's our Padlet. I'm going to click on that link. Once I've clicked on the link you'll see that our Padlet comes up and, and down in the bottom, there's a couple ways that we can add this. First way is we've got this plus sign. We can click on that, and then we can hit the plus sign here. And it says add an attachment. And then we can choose the file that we want to attach onto it. And so we're going to make sure then that we attach the picture. Um, that's a JPEG that we saved of our picture that we took the background out of. We'll hit OK, put our name in the title, and there we go. The second thing that you'll see then is that it says the password to complete the stage. And so make sure that you get the password and then you can after you put your picture on and then you can complete the stage. You can also just double click. Now a double click is clicking twice not clicking with two fingers and go about it doing the same way. So you can attach and uh, add an attachment either way. All right. Okay. So go ahead and try that here. Save it as a JPEG, and then you're going to come over to Padlet and you're going to post it on to the Padlet. All right. Good luck, guys.